Watch. One, two, three, four. Hey guys, it's Jason here from InfluenceFilms.com. I'm back with another Michael Jackson book review. This is for the graphic novel Neverland, The Life and Death of Michael Jackson by Jim McCarthy and Brian Williamson. So, it's a paperback book. Here's the side of it, just like a standard graphic novel pretty much. Here's the back. The back has some cool photos. Um, before we get into it, I'm just going to say that um, I heard a lot of flack from fans who have read this book, and I wanted to read it for myself just because um, I love comic books, I'm a big comic book geek, and the idea that this kind of a Michael Jackson graphic novel would be available really excited me. Um, when I read the summary before I bought it, I was kind of skeptical, um, and after reading it, well, I'll just tell you my thoughts as we get into it. Here's the first page, pretty cool looking. Um... Here's the introduction. The introduction is actually written by an author who is coming out with their own book about Michael Jackson's style. It should be coming out sometime this year, 2012. This photo is really cool. I'm going to zoom in and show you guys. I love the way they did that with the sparkling effect there. Okay, so here's some of the opening stuff, the prologue. It's kind of dramatic stuff. Talking about performers that were out around the time of the early years, so to speak. Okay. Um, as you can see, there's Barry Gordy. Um, and there's Joe, Michael. Um, some of the stuff, I know Michael described how his father treated him and his brothers growing up, and I think this book does a really good job, even though it's sad, of really depicting something of what that drama was probably like if if the accounts Michael gave were true, and it's really it's really sad to look at, but at the same time, it, I mean, I think it serves its purpose well. Um, okay. Dramatic stuff to look at for sure. Stuff like this. As far as the what they're actually saying, stuff like this, I mean, real dramatic stuff, kind of reminds me of the comic book, um, The Killing Joke. Pretty neat. There's that. Here's a cool photo of Diana Ross. Okay. Oh, great stuff. Here's Scoop Newsworthy. Bonus points if you remember this. Some cool dynamic stuff here. Now, one of my criticisms of the book, at least early on, is just that when you have Barry Gordy's dialogue, he cusses a lot, and he seems like kind of like an angry individual. Same thing with Michael Jackson, and I just don't know if that's truly how Michael was in his personal life. I mean, he, he might have been. I mean, given what, what came out during uh, the 2005 trial, we learned a lot about Michael's private life. If you ask me a bit too much, but... Um, so who really knows, but I just, I, I have a problem with this. I mean, like, here's here's an example, like, here's Barry Gordy saying, you know, something like that, and I just kind of, eh, I, I don't know, kind of reads weird for me a little bit, I guess. I guess when you come from seeing something like the Jacksons in American Dream and then this, it's just hard to reconcile the two. Now we're into the whiz. Um, I, I think the book does a pretty good job. Here's something about the nose, okay? I liked how they drew this, how they showed this. Um, 
some fans might take issue with um, some of the surgery stuff later on, but I think, you know, if you saw the part in Jackson's American Dream, I think this does a pretty good job of showing that drama, but without um, making it too big of a deal. Okay? Love this shot. I'm going to try and show it to you. It's, it's really cool looking. Visually, this book just knocks it out of the park. Okay. Michael and Paul. Alright. Here's a cool shot. I love it. I love it on the opening page and I love it now from the Billie Jean video. It just looks cool. Okay. So there's here's recording Thriller. And down the drum track for Billie Jean. Okay. Now here's Vincent Price. Here's another cool Thriller shot. Here's an awesome one pager. Okay. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, now we're getting into the surgery stuff a bit. I'd say around the bad era is when this book kind of jumps the shark, at least for me, um, just in terms of how the book is handled. Again, here's Barry Gordy again. See, I mean, stuff like this. I, I, you know, I don't know if Barry Gordy really was that way or not. I'm not really too familiar with how he was in real life, but um, that just kind of doesn't sit well with me offhand. I think it's painting with broad strokes. Okay, this photo is really cool looking. I'm going to try and zoom out and show you guys. Pretty cool. Okay. And also, I'm going to go back to this photo. It's like um, that shot from, I think it was the one of the History or Dangerous Tour or maybe even the Black or White video. There's a shot of Michael like this in his later years, and I liked how the book took this and kind of weaved it into something from the thriller era. Moving on. Now we're talking about the victory tour. And just, uh, like, here's Michael saying, you know, geez, guy gives me the goddamn creeps. And, and it just kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if Michael really said that. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. And maybe to some fans it's going to sound like I'm nitpicking. But I, I know for the sake of drama, I know why they did it. Uh, but I, I don't know. Um, there's Bubbles. Okay. Looks pretty cute. The shot's cute, too. Um, there's a cool shot, too. Um, now, when they talk about the the rumors of the late 80s dealing with the hyperbaric chamber and the buying the elephant's man's, elephant man's bones, I just, I, I don't know. The way the story was written, I, I know they took this quote from Frank DeLeo here, and um, I, it just, I don't know, something about it just doesn't sit well with me. Um, I feel like it's relying a bit too much on the tabloid press um, for something like this book. But I think it's important to remember when we're looking into this book, it's like a film. The writer, this is his kind of filter of Michael Jackson. So if we're offended by it, um, you know, this this is just his filter of it. And it's as long as you know it's not the definitive, like the Bible of Michael Jackson's life, I, I think you'll be okay. Um, I, I keep going back to this page because this is really showing the surgery stuff and um, I just don't know I, I think it comes across a bit rough for me as a fan I was kind of like oh man but it is what it is um, you get the good with the bad like something like this uh, I don't know how I feel about it to be honest with you and then this I think is really over the top but I don't ever see anything like it it actually has cut out lines too can't believe that. <clears throat> and, it, and it makes really rash um, implications about Michael. It says, quote, my face is changing, but I'm still feeling the same fears inside. It's like, uh, I think it's a bit of a leap personally to say that Michael really thought that, but maybe he did. I don't know. Okay, now we're talking about bad. Um, and like I said, okay, here's another thing I take issue with in this book. Prince... I don't know if Prince ever said this, but um, I read it and I thought it was funny, but I was like, did Prince really say that? Um, he says in this book, quote, um, well, they was talking about us working together, but it never came to nothing, you know? You know why he called the album bad? Because he couldn't fit the word terrible on the cover. So I just, uh, I don't know. Okay. Think about Neverland now. Okay. There's bubbles. Okay. 
Michael and his friend Jimmy. Here's them kind of holding hands. Okay, people still lying bad. I think this book also kind of does a poor job. This photo is really cool of skipping over Michael's career post bad. It doesn't really talk about the dangerous era very much or the history era or anything post. It talks about Invincible a little bit, but by and large. Um, I will give it credit for really doing a good job of turning the Oprah interview into a comic book. I think that was craftfully done. Okay. Dangerous tour. Okay. And some of this stuff, like he says in this thing, you know, I'm writing this letter to people. I think the letter from people came, you know, long before this, but it is what it is. Okay. Here's Michael. Brett Barnes. Well, it's his cousin Brett, so we're going to assume he means Brett Barnes. Okay, here's when they went to Vegas. This is supposed to be um, Jordy's father. Okay, I, I liked how they did this. This is pretty cool. Um, again, just really kind of reminiscent of the, the killing joke with the way the art kind of dominates over the page and it, it's got these really dramatic quotes you know so just pre pretty cool to look at for sure and it really does a good job of explaining how at least in the context of Michael's life this person was a real threat and uh, just this was a real real pain painful part of Michael's life look how they illustrate the drama it's pretty good um, it's Michael and Lisa Marie of course, here's Priscilla Presley coming up on the next page. This art still, I mean, it's its dynamic, but some fans might take issue with it. But um, And there's quotes like this, I am disassociated from my soul, from myself, from my soul. I am just plain riddled with anxiety and fear. And I just don't know if that was really, again, what Michael really felt like. There's the... Oh, man, that makes me... A little sick to see. There's Tom Snedden. Okay. Here was the strip search. This book does a really good job of capturing how kind of hard these years were for Michael and the glimpses of happiness with like Lisa Marie, things like that. Okay. Here's around the time they broke up and she left. Again, this is a great shot from the history tour that they reproduced to use in this thing. I think it's really cool the way they did that. There's a history statue down there. Little things like I was promoting history personally and professionally. I'm like, ugh. I don't know how I feel about that. There's Debbie Rowe and Prince and Michael. Okay. So then it just skips from, you know, when Prince was born to now the Invincible stuff, which I kind of take issue with because I'm like, what happened to, you know, that time in between? But I guess in terms of this story, they're just trying to advance the story. So now we're in the Martin Bashir stuff. Okay. And again, this is a really good job of using the quotes from the Martin Bashir uh, documentary all in this comic. So there's the baby dangling stuff. And here's the, you know, kind of criticism of Michael's face that went in to the documentaries that were on TV around that time as well. There's Gloria Alred and Tom Snedden. It does a good job of making a... Because Michael's the narrator of this story. And so... He says, and my nemesis was still waiting. Of course, again, it's talking about Tom Snedden. And then it says, um, looks like District Attorney Tom Snedden ain't never going to let me go. Um, now they're all up in Neverland with search warrants. So, I mean, um, and I, don't, I don't know if that's really how Michael spoke, but now we're in the trial, which is kind of reminiscent of the actual trial since they didn't let cameras into it. There's Tom Mezzaro. Okay. Like Hulkin. So, and then we just skip from the trial. Even though the forward talks about Thriller 25, the comic book doesn't, which is kind of a disappointment. Here's This Is It. Of course, above here was the press conference. And the, this part here. This is a pretty good job of capturing the drama. I don't know if I agree with it or not the way it went down. It really seems like it's trying to excuse Conrad's actions here. But then again, at the time it was published, they might not have. 
I mean, when going to print, they, they might not have known um, everything that happened. The final pages are kind of morbid. Um, it seems kind of weird, honestly. Um, so, but it's it's just it, it's it'll it'll keep you visually for sure. Here's the sketchbook that's included. Okay. So then they kind of talk about their process for writing it here, writing this something like this, and then there's some more photos which are pretty neat to look at, like this. Okay. This one's cool too. It's from Leave Me Alone, Michael and Bubbles. Okay. This shot's really cool. I like this one a lot. Okay. Alright guys, so here's some ads for their other, you know, graphic novels that they've done about Nirvana, Kurt Cobain, the Beatles, and the Sex Pistols. And that's pretty much about it, guys. Oh, and then there's one final shot of Bubbles. Okay. So, all in all, I think, um, I think as long as you keep this book in the context of it's like a film, um, as long as you know going in that this book is not the definitive Michael Jackson biography, it shouldn't upset you too much. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to avoid a book that's kind of critical of Michael, um, this might be a book to avoid, but if you can, you know, Accept it for what it is. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, and the art is certainly above average, and the art is really, honestly, pretty amazing. So um, that's that's about it, guys. Um, I hope this was helpful. I know I wanted to personally see inside this book, and I was hoping that someone would show some more images inside it, but I hope this video does that for you guys, and I hope my review is helpful, too. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Make that change. Make that change.